Introduced in 1970, the Neve 1073 was found in Neve consoles such as the Wessex A88 and 8014 and has been used on a massive number of popular recordings from the late 20th century until today. This hallowed Class A transistor mic line amp with EQ epitomizes the beautiful Neve sound with clarity, sheen, and bite. And now for the first time, based on Universal Audio's Unison technology, you can track through the only authentic end-to-end circuit emulation on the market. Universal Audio have modeled the dual-stage Red Knob preamp, revered three-band EQ and post-fader output amplifier with obsessive detail. The Neve 1073 preamp and EQ replicates the experience of the original 1970s hardware with stunning accuracy, gaining the name of the world's only authentic licensed plugin emulation by Neve. Let's take a tour of the plugin. So in this example, I'm using the Apollo Twin through a Erland EHRM microphone, and we're going to take advantage of the Unison technology to drive our mic signal through this plugin. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my inserts. So all you're hearing now is the Neve 1073. And since we lost some of the gain, let's go ahead and make it up with the plugin. Unison technology offers a bi-directional control and communication from the 1073 plugin to the digitally controlled mic preamps on Apollo interfaces. So in this case, you're going to see a orange dot appear on the red gain knob of the plugin. And I can adjust this using the Apollo Twin. So we'll crank up the gain. Now let's adjust the fader. And then we'll bring the digital output volume down. So let's listen to my voice without and with the plugin. This is what the microphone preamp sounds like on the Apollo Twin without the plugin. And this is what it sounds like with the Neve 1073. It's a little louder, so we'll bring down the digital output. And let's try to match the level. Here we go. This is before the plugin. And this is after the plugin. Okay, we're getting there. Let me adjust it a little bit more. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so that sounds fuller, richer. We can also adjust the fader and the digital output. So again, this is the Apollo Twin preamp, dry, and now the 1073. I personally like it better on, it sounds great. However, if you're not using an Apollo interface, you can still employ the Neve 1073 preamp and EQ on mixing. Below the mic pre, we have EQ controls. And the first thing you need to do is to engage the EQ circuitry by hitting this button. When it's pressed down, when it's dark, that means that the signal is going through the EQ circuitry. And we can use the high shelf, to boost or cut the high end. So you can use this to make your track sound brighter. And I'm gonna back away from the mic a little bit. But you can hear how much brighter it is. Let's turn it the opposite direction. You can eliminate all that high end. And let's just add a little bit here. There are no decibel markings, so you kinda have to just eyeball it and play it by ear. Okay, next up you have the mids. So this comprises of 360 Hertz, 700 Hertz, 1.6K, 3.2K, 4.8K, and 7.2. For vocals, I'll use 4.8. Check one, two, one, two. So this brings up the presence of the vocals a little bit closer to the listener. Okay, next up we have the low shelf. We have the off position, 35 Hertz, 60 Hertz, 110 Hertz, and 220. So let's use 110 and then boost it up. And we're gonna use this boost to add a little bit more body to the vocals. However, if it sounds too muffled, we can take advantage of using the low cut, which is currently on 160. Let's turn off the high pass filter and you can hear all that low end. And let's set this to 80. Okay, so this is what the Neve 1073 sounds like without EQ. And this is what a Neve 1073 sounds like with the EQ. We got a little bit too much bass, so we'll bring that down. And again, these controls are very sensitive. So a little bit goes a long way. Okay, great. Next to the EQ button, you have a phase switch, and this reverses the polarity of the input. To the top right, you have the preamp controls, and you can adjust for different impedance levels. You can also engage a minus 20 dB pad, and then you have the level fader, and this has been modeled. The fader is what's called an original PNG output attenuating fader. And the way it works is that if you notice the mic pre stages, you have 10 decibels between these. So you have 40, you have 30, 
and then you have these dots in between which are basically five decibels so to adjust in between you can adjust the fader so let's say that you want to get more crunch from your preamp you can drive that higher but then adjust the fader down and this fader is a physical model of the original attenuating fader on the console which is different from the digital output let me give you an example i'm going to turn the digital output all the way down Okay, and now I have the attenuating fader all the way up and you're hearing more crunch. Let's drive this a lot. And now we're getting all this crunch and saturation from the console, but we're using the digital output to use gain compensation so that our signal is not so loud. So in certain situations where you want actual distortion, you can crank up the gain, you can crank up the fader, and you can still have a low level going into your DAW. Let's reset these settings. Okay, so we're back, and we'll listen to the preamp and the fader on separate examples. There are a number of benefits to use the Neve 1073 from Universal Audio. For starters, when you're using an Apollo interface, you can control the mic preamp gain staging and impedance directly from the interface. In a mixing scenario, you can still use the mic preamp in line level mode and the fader to get more crunch and saturation. And lastly, the Neve 1073 offers artist presets. You have artist presets from Dave Isaac, Ed Cherney, Joe Ciccarelli, Ryan Hewitt, Ryan West, and numerous more artists. Now that you've been introduced to the Neve 1073, let's check it out in a session.